traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, uh, looking good. Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. I posted a chart here of Beyond Meat, folks. Uh, B-Y-N-D, I think is the symbol. And uh, there's a story behind this. Uh, many of you that know me pretty well realize that many years ago, I worked as an expert witness for some of the larger law firms in Los Angeles. Kiesel, Young & Logan, Gibson, Gibson Dunn & Crutcher. And uh, those were my main clients. I got those through my good friend, Eddie Horowitz. And I did about oh, 40, 40 cases over a period of about five years. I only lost one. That was the one I thought I was going to win. But uh, anyway, uh, this is a story about a, a family in Mission Viejo, California. And uh, he is a mortgage banker. And uh, he had never done anything in stocks before. He's 48 years old. The story behind this is because I received a uh, SOS call from uh, a family member of theirs that uh, knew that I knew something about trading, and they knew me from the old Drexel days and say, see what they could happen. But anyway, I want you to notice here, the stock got all the way up to 250, and then it came all the way back down. You can see it made a double bottom, and then it made a triple top up in this area right here. Okay, well... These folks uh, started to get involved uh, right here is where they started to get involved, right there. That's where they got involved in. It was uh, several hundred dollars a share. And then you can see the market broke down, and then it got back to – they were back to even again. And in the past year and a half, you can see that the market has been going down. This last little uh, move here, the 382, that was the last uh, get-out-of-dodge signal that you could get. That was 140. Okay, and going back to the left, look at the high. You see how the 382 come in right after the high, and then the market broke all the way down, made another 382, and then came down, and then made a big run up and stuff. These are storybook stocks, folks. They're feeding people uh, information that may or may not be true. But any the sadness of this is that these folks have been in this for a very, very long time. The problem was right here at $45 a share. I'm not going to mention the brokerage company because you all know who they are. I'm not going to mention that at all. But uh, the brokerage guy convinced him to take a mortgage out on his house in Mission Viejo. The homes there are all $2 million. They owned it pretty much outright because they'd been there for 25 years. And so they took a, a quarter of a, I think it was $300,000 loan out on this right here. And then they doubled up and then, of course, now the stock has got down to 12. Well, during this area right in here, uh, you know, the, the money was dissipating. And so they started averaging down by getting more money out of the equity of their home. Now they have like $350,000 equity out of a home that was worth $2.5 So they're basically the home's paid for. So it's not tapioca, but it's very, very close to it. Now you can see that this keeps going down and down and down. Well, the folks that called me, they I don't know who this family is. I'm just giving you the information because other people have gone through this, and I want you to explain that these things can happen, and they're really, really bad, okay? But here is where the real problem arose right there because when the brokerage firm told him to get a secondary mortgage on his home, even though he was probably qualified to get a million or two million or a million dollars out of that house anyway, he took a $300,000 loan to buy stocks. He had never bought stocks before. Folks in the stock market, they have a rule called 405, and that rule means know thy customer. So if you're in the brokerage business, you have to know your customer. Well, this guy, what he did by recommending this, he put this family in extreme danger. And that is not allowed in the New York Stock Exchange rules. 
And so what I suggested to them, I said, I know it's probably the wrong thing to do because he was a big boy. He should have taken his losses, but by golly, the brokerage has to assume some of this responsibility. So I accept, I told him to call uh, Kiesel Young and Logan over there in Long Beach. And I said, uh, ask to talk to Skip Kiesel, Skip Kiesel if you can. Tell him you spoke to me. Tell him Rule 405 and tell him the story. And so they went through and they did take the case uh, yesterday. And uh, they're probably going to get a substantial amount of money back. They're going to lose a lot of money, but not all of it. Because this, this is where the real problem lies, folks. When someone feeds you a line of baloney and you don't do something about it, you're partially responsible for it. That's why they're not going to get all their money back, but they're going to get some of the money back. Because they were not treated fairly. The guy was giving him a... Uh, I don't want to get into the fundamentals because I don't know anything about the fundamentals. All I know is this stuff is beyond meat. Boy, what a great name for it. That stuff is so far beyond meat that you'll never be able to taste it. I mean, it's terrible. We've got a restaurant here in Tucson, folks. It's a five-star restaurant. It's one of my very favorites. Anybody that comes in town, we always go there. It's called Vivachi. I've known them since they started that restaurant 30 years ago, and they've got something on the menu, which is a synthetic hamburger, Okay. They took it off the menu this year after having it on for two years. He said he would sell maybe two a month. And I said, did you ever think about it? And he said, well, you know, we had so many other things, it didn't really make any difference. So anyway, but that that's the story here. You've got to be able to take responsibility on some of these things here. What's happened, this guy's not a trader. He was an investor, investor but the man is in the mortgage business now, and his income is down like 65% of what it was before. So now they've got this huge overhanging debt on their on their property and they're going to get some of it back. They're not going to get all of it back. They'll, they'll make an adjustment for whatever the amount happens to be. But uh, anyway, they're doing something they didn't understand. And I did the same thing, folks. You see this area right here? That was me, 1974. Boom. That was me, the end of 1974. You know, I never got anything back. You know, I had to quit and learn to do what the heck I was supposed to be doing. That's really, you know, what it's all about. So, you got to take responsibility for it, but if you're ever in a situation where you think you've been hoodwinked, especially in stocks, it doesn't work in commodities, because in commodities, you've got to sign all these disclosures saying, yep, I know this thing's risky, yep, I know I can lose all my money, but uh, in stocks, they don't have that. When I went to work for Drexel Burnham, the very first day that I took the job, I went into the office and my boss said to me, he said, Larry, he said, we're a boutique firm, he said, we handle the best people in Wall Street here on the West Coast, here in Beverly Hills, in uh, all the area, areas of Southern California. He said, our customers are, are accustomed to making money. They're accustomed to losing money. But the one thing they're not accustomed to doing is losing all their money. And if you lose more than 25%, go back into pharmacy, is what he said. And I said, don't worry, that's not going to happen. And it didn't. But anyway, that was neither here nor there. But you've got to be able you know, to take responsibility for your trades. But I put these 382 patterns up here to show you that those were the last days of the last uh, days to get out of Dodge, folks, because if you don't get out of it at that point, and there's all kinds of these stocks, folks. It's ARK and Robinhood and Coinbase and Carvana. They're all over the place. All right, we'll be right back. I'm off my soapbox. 877-927-6648. Jeff Huge, Alpha Insights, coming up soon. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio Tom O'Brien is here to help Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years a frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you Tom's daily market newsletter market insights is published every morning when markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 hello operator broadsword to danny boy broadsword to danny boy come in danny boy okay here we go folks i posted the chart here two charts the first one was the one from yesterday when we had the big run up, okay? And then I posted the secondary one that showed that we stopped right at the 61% retracement. Now, if you follow the NASDAQ, you'll know that it went right down to the 78% retracement. And uh, the, uh, the chart is dark and out of focus. Let me see if I can get a focus chart here for us. Nope, that's not going to happen. Uh, let me try it again, Al, and we'll see if we can uh, do it that way. Hold on one second. And uh, lots of technical things going on in the world today. Hold on. All of my frustration in this business comes from the technical part. Now, you'll notice here that the low we made here was a 61% retracement. Now, folks, if you do the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ came down to the 78% retracement. Okay, so that means we've already gone up here and matched the high. So we're just because it's Fed Day, you know, it's bouncing around both sides of the of the of the method, uh, uh, both sides of the of the range of the day. So it's not a big deal. But let's get back. I have a couple questions here that need to be answered, uh, and that is the uh, natural gas. I wanted to uh, bring this up to you uh, because several people have asked me about natural gas because. Uh, I am I'm bullish long-term natural gas, but it hasn't quite got there. We tried buying it yesterday at that 407. We got out at 597, 397, and uh, took a loss. And of course, we went down to a little bit lower low at uh, 391 today, and then we rallied 30 points, which is not unusual because the market's very, very overbought. But right now, because of this weekly pattern here. I have to assume that that's going to be the valid one that I'm looking at. And so I stand aside on that one. Okay. Now, there's another one that several questions have come up, and that is uh, those of you who follow the 24-7, we were able to get an incredibly nice uh, sell-off in the uh, crude oil at the uh, 382 yesterday. That was way up there when it was at uh, 79 and change, and we got down here to 76 and change. I said a uh, we were setting right at the 61% retracement, and I said cover the short crude at that time. My reasoning behind that 
was very simple. It's the beginning of the year, and I like to start the year with a nice win. And we were also we had a we had a win in the in the euro, but it ended up being a break even trade. And uh, we had a small win in in the gold, three dollars, believe it or not. And then, of course, it broke and came down again. But notice how it stopped exactly at the 61% retracement. This was last night. Now, look, you can see where it stopped. Now, this is what can drive some people crazy. And it doesn't drive me crazy because I, it happens all the time. I'm going to bring this up. You're not going to get the absolute low tick and high tick on these things. It's just not going to occur. You can see the ABCD up here. There was a cell right there. There was the 3A2 right there. And we had another 382 right here, okay? And then here's where I covered right there where that red box is. And look what happened. Thing came down. It still gave another one today. Had another $2,000 in it. I wasn't involved with that one. But that's the way it is. Once I finish a trade, I move on to the next one. In 1976, when I went to work for Drexel Burnham Lambert, I knew that I could beat the market because I had been studying for a year and a half that Gartley book and ABCDs, all the things that I cover in that Floor Traders Handbook, the fact that these things work some of the time but not all of the time, and that's all I needed to know. I can handle five, six, seven, eight losses in a row, and I've had those before. That's, I think that's my biggest record was seven. My biggest string of profits was 19 days in a row that I had wins. <laughs> that was another story. I think I've mentioned it before. But anyway, that's I got out of it. I forgot it, and I moved on. That's all I do because I knew at that point in my trading career that I knew enough about ABCDs and how to do some simple time counts and work with Fibonacci numbers. And, and later on when I met Bryce Gilmore, I became more proficient in it. Uh, and that that's what really you know helped me along because then I saw the you know the butterfly patterns and the one three fives and that kind of stuff. I got the one three fives back in 1986, but uh, those are from the uh, uh, Longstreet boys, Bill and Roy Longstreet, uh, uh, Roy and his son Bill. So anyway, that's that's what I that's what I look at. Like today in the gold market, you know, we saw the top being made up there at 1869. We never tried to sell that. All we did was to wait for a simple 135 pattern. If you did a 15-minute chart, you'd have seen it went right up to 1864. The high was 1866. The stop was at 1867. And it's had a pretty nice break to the downside. And so that's the, that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to line up these so that you're able to see where, where, you, start, where you stand as far as risk control. The one thing you're never going to see me do, folks – you're never going to see me buy a stock like Beyond Meat and listen to people feed you all kinds of misinformation. Do you realize how much stuff they had to feed you on the way down? And then, but I don't know. I just, uh, it's just really amazing to me. And not only the fact that why they call it a name like Beyond Meat. I mean, give me a break. How about just like meat or something like that, but beyond me, believe me, it's way, way beyond meat, folks. That stuff doesn't even doesn't even taste anything like meat. But let's get back to the seriousness of what we're talking here. Let's talk about a stock that we were watching for a long time here. Now we talked about Tesla. It went and broke the bottom. Remember at 109. Now we've come back and we've we've reinstated it the game. Same thing with the. Apple Apple went down and made a double bottom, but you can see here the low here in the Amazon held at that at 82 level. The low was 81.66. We're now about 10% uh, higher, and this is a major ABCD, and you can see the butterfly pattern on the bottom. This has a chance for a pretty good rally, and we're seeing it so far. Now, we've broken below those lows for at least for one day. And this is the hard part of the year because the first few days of the year have such a bullish bias that it's really, really hard to be short because statistically it says buy in early January, but that doesn't always work. But anyway, the market's oversold as it is, so a big rally would not be uh, surprising. But any close below the low that we made in October, boy, that spells really, really seriousness. That's, that's uh, quite a bit below the uh, 3,600 level in the e-mini S&P, and right now we're trading, uh, I think, at 3880 or something like that at a very good level. Now, here's something that drives me absolutely crazy, folks. If you talk about acting crazy, this is, this is a chart that I had prepared. I prepared it Sunday, 
And I said, we need to look. 382 retracements here, perfect 382 retracement here in the wheat from the high that we made way back here. Okay, see it way back there, perfect 382. You can see we had one 382 right here, another 382 right here, another 382 right here. But look at this, how it's set up. Now, this is someone asked me a question if you had just one, one signal that you only could use, I would pick this one, folks. This is a 382 retracement in this wheat. Now, I just did a 15 minute chart on it, updating it through today from those highs that we made. And you'll see, bada bing, bada boom, ABCD 382. ABCD 382. That's equivalent to folks of 45, 50 handles in the SP, and that's just wheat for today. Stay tuned for Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. We're speaking with uh, Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights. Jeff, Happy New Year, and thanks for joining us today. I hope you had a great holiday. I did, Larry. Happy New Year to you as well. Great to be here. Okay, now listen, we've been doing this for quite a while, and you got me confused on this one. I'm totally in the dark when you talk about global asset class leadership. You're going to have to explain this graph to me because I couldn't. I looked at it, and I said, eh, that may or may not be right. So please tell me what you're looking at when you're showing something like this. Sure. You know, that's our uh, global asset allocation rotation model. And what that is is really a, it's an algorithm that looks at relative strength uh, of each asset class compared to itself and compared to a benchmark, which is our 60-40 uh, MSCI All-Country World Index for the equity side. 
and the mm-hmm. Bar- Barclays Global Aggregate Bond Index for the bond side. And so, you know, that benchmark was down about 15.5% last year. The first time mm-hmm. in, I think, 40 years that both stocks and bonds had been down, uh, you know, double digits, basically. Uh, and um, for all practical purposes, this, uh, you know, really kind of roiled the markets. And as you can see in kind of the ranking of the asset classes on the left-hand mm-hmm. side, you know, with the dollar and commodities and gold bullion, they were really the leaders, Larry, which is oh, okay, unusual okay, okay, for okay. both the yeah. dollar and commodities to be up. Wow. Okay. The next one is really easy for me to understand, and that is uh, the rate cycle, <laughs> the biggest move in 40 years. And it's, I believe it's just getting started. But tell the folks what you're watching here. I think this is very clear. We just experienced a 450 basis point increase in short-term interest rates in the course of about the last nine months. And it's the shortest period of time in the last four decades in which we've seen that much, uh, you know, tightening or restrictive policy implemented. And that has us pretty concerned about the economic circumstances for the next year. Okay. That sounds pretty good. And I think people are quite aware of that now that we've seen interest rates uh, go up on mortgages of pretty much Double now. This next one on recession probability is uh, really kind of scary because uh, 96%. That's 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 about as close to a certainty as you're going to get, isn't it? I think it is, and you know, I think there's a hundred percent consensus among Wall Street uh, uh, economists right now that there's going to be a recession next year. In fact, Alan Greenspan, the former uh, Fed chairman, just. Uh, kind of remarked yesterday that he thought that it was the highest probability. But, you know, what the conference board does here is they they take a series of leading indicators, which include the yield spread between the 10-year and the three-month bond, which has been inverted now for some time. Uh, They look at the, the Goldman Sachs Financial Conditions Index, and then they also look at the Federal Reserve's balance sheet and the changes that have occurred. And, you know, it all looks pretty ugly at this point. Well, you know, you're talking the next chart is about valuations, and I saw something on Bloomberg about that uh, this morning, that valuations were still quite high. You know, you'd think after a 20% decline in the S&P, stocks would be cheap, but that's not, in fact, the case. If we just look at the uh, U.S. total market cap uh, to GDP statistic, we're at 146%. That's higher than it was back in 2000 at the peak of the dot-com bubble. But moreover, if we look at, you know, similar sort of metrics like price to earnings ratio, we're at 27.8 times on a cyclically adjusted basis. Price to sales, 2.3 times. That's down from the record, but it's still higher than the dot-com peak. And then dividend yield's been plumbing its lows around 1.7%, and price to book is very, very elevated as well. Wow. I'll tell you, you've got some great statistics here, my friend. I hope that people appreciate the work you do. So this is the next one. It's about earnings per share declines during recessions. That's right. You know, if we've got 96% probability of a recession next year, we need to be concerned about what the implications are for earnings. And if we look back at all the past recessions going to 1920, we've seen that earnings have declined by an average of 29.5%. Uh, during recessions. And so, you know, even if we got a 15% decline in earnings from current levels, that would take us well below uh, the uh, 2020 uh, uh, level of two, 2008, or $208, rather, uh, in uh, 2021. And so, you know, the point is that we could have a down year, not just one year, but two year decline. So, um, I would be looking for earnings to come in below $200 a share this year, and I do not think the market is priced in that sort of a decline on earnings. Consensus is still looking for around $230. Yeah. Oh, before we go to the next chart, which is your Elliott Wave, I have a question myself, and uh, yeah. stock was brought to my attention uh, today, uh, well, yesterday, Beyond Meat. Did you ever have any... Uh, do any trading in that? I mean, does, I've, you know, I, I didn't even bother to try to taste that stuff because I, I didn't even like the smell of it. But anybody would name something beyond meat when they're trying to compete with meat. Hello, operator. I mean, that's not a very good, very good name for it. But have you had any experience with that stock, Jeff? 
I, you know, that name does not uh, resonate with me. I haven't done any work on it at all. I, I don't even know where it's trading, to be honest with you. Uh, well, it's it had a slight sell-off. It went from 280 to, I think it's $11 today. It, in, in, <laughs> and uh, But there's Based a long... Based on that alone, Larry, I can tell you I would not have any interest in it. <laughs> yeah, well... I know some other people that wouldn't like to it either. Let's talk about the Elliott Wave. That much you certainly do a great job at. So tell the folks what you're looking at. It's getting clearer and clearer that we're going lower, at least from looking at this chart. It is. And it is. In fact, if we just look at the uh, right-hand side of this chart, it's the primary degree. That's really everything that's happened since the March two, 2020 low. And so that, uh, that pandemic crisis low saw this big push up to a peak in January of last year. Here we are a year later to the date from where the stock market peaked, and we're down substantially, around 20% or so. The stock market's up a little bit today, uh, and that could change, obviously. But, you know, we've got a pretty high level of confidence that we've put in a five-wave count to the downside, which we're counting as um, primary wave one down. And then we've seen a rally up to that August high. That's primary wave two up. And that means that we're in the midst of primary wave three down. And so we've sketched it out that we put in intermediate wave one and intermediate wave two as of the December 13th high. As long as that high holds at 4101, um, then we are in the midst of a third of a third wave decline. And if we're right about that, that could ultimately carry the S&P 500 down to at least 2250, in our opinion. And that could happen sometime in the first quarter, first half of next year, more or less. Wow. Now, I have a question for one of our listeners. Do you uh, follow the Elliott Way folks? I mean, I know this is all your own work, but do you follow to see if they are looking at the same thing they're looking at? Or, or do you do everything I, I independently? I don't follow them. I don't subscribe to them. But I do know them very, very well. In fact, Bob Prechter was one of my mentors, and he actually sponsored me for the Chartered Market Technician exam. Oh, wow. Okay, that's great. Okay, now we got another one coming up here, so bear with me and I'll get the next chart up. Uh, and oh, we got a break coming up. Let's take a break here. Uh, we've got some sure. bills to pay here, and then we'll get back and we're going to talk about the short term Elliott Wave count that uh, gives you that number you, that's probably scared the people that were listening. <laughs> so we'll be, we'll be right back after the break here. And, uh, Oh, I think that's right. Uh, no, we've got 32 seconds left, unfortunately. Well, here comes the commercial now, so we're all right. So we'll see you in just a few minutes, Jeff. Stay with us, please. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks, speaking with Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights, and we're going to be talking about the short-term wave count on Elliott that gave us this figure of roughly 2,100 in the S&P. So you feel pretty strongly about this, young man. You know, I think that the rally that we saw off of the October 13th low was a counter-trend advance. I know that uh, because it is a very overlapping wave, and you do not see that in a uh, impulsive, emotive wave uh, advance. And so this was a you know counter trend that retraced a little bit more than 68.2 percent um, that Fibonacci or 61.8 percent rather that that key Fibonacci retracement level. It almost got to a point where um, the first leg of the three-wave advance equaled the second leg. That was a common sort of relationship. Missed it by about, I think, 17 points. But the decline off of that um, uh, December 13th peak, which we're counting as intermediate wave two of primary wave three down, mm -hmm. um, that was five waves down. It's a very clear five waves down. And we've been rallying in three waves. As of yesterday's high, if that high holds, then that could be minor wave two, and we should see a pretty steady decline from there. Uh, and we think that that could continue into the first quarter, if not even uh, further into uh, next year. We're saying somewhere kind of in the first half we would expect our, our target mm -hmm. to be achieved. We think it's going to be a relatively rapid decline to get there. Well, one of the things that you've got going for you on this is the fact that your uh, momentum – uh, on some of these things have, have really uh, very clearly have uh, topped and they're heading down. That's what we see, Larry. In fact, when we made the high on December 1st, we thought that was going to be the high. And then we made a slight higher high on December 13th. But in both cases, momentum made lower highs. And um, from that, we conclude that we've seen uh, what our friend Tom uh, Fitzpatrick at Citigroup used to uh, or had coined as a uh, I got kind of big turning point, a triple uh, momentum divergence, okay? This, mm -hmm. this triple divergence or triple negative divergence that we've seen uh, where momentum makes sequential lower highs is a telltale sign that the market is at a turning point. Wow. And your next chart is on volatility. Uh, is saying people, I guess, are they're shying away from the market. Is that what that's pretty much telling us? Well, you know, the VIX is uh, is kind of a, a compilation of implied volatility for put options, basically. And when implied volatility is very, very low, like it has been recently, kind of in the low 20% area, that means people are relatively complacent. And when it gets above 30, 35% or so, um, you know, that means that there's a little more anxiety or fear in the market. What we've seen is a pretty steady relationship this past year. Every time the market is seen the VIX spike to around 34%, it has marked bottoms or tradable lows in the market. And every time we got down to uh, below 20%, it's marked 
uh, relative peaks. And so we just saw that December 1st high uh, concomitant with a 19% level on the VIX index, which in basically implies that that was a top. Then we saw this slightly higher high, just a couple points higher. And um, the VIX actually made a higher low at that point. And that's a positive divergence that signals a trend change in the VIX. And so we expect the VIX to rally sharply higher as stocks continue their decline. Okay, now the next one I think is going to bring a lot of uh, information to folks, and that is your cycle projection that you're showing here. It's really quite clear that, uh, you know, this thing has been following very, very nicely what you've just been talking about. And uh, you want to show the folks what, what that means? Because you can see the triple yeah, top. absolutely. And, so this is, yeah. a, this is called the economic confidence model. It's an economic cycle theory that was developed by a fellow named Martin Armstrong of Armstrong Economics. And oh, yeah. he proposes that the, the, you know, the waves in the economy uh, basically ebb and flow with um, about an 8.6-year periodicity. And that's based on uh, the mathematical concept of pi times a thousand days. And um, what Armstrong proved is that, you know, it has a very, very high correlation with market lows and market highs and in intermediate turning points. And each one of these, the way the cycles articulated here, doesn't necessarily mean an absolute high or low. It just means a, a high in the particular trend. And so, you know, we've been watching this model for a while and Armstrong's had kind of something of a, a sordid past. And so, you know, he has experienced some reputational damage uh, due to some problems with uh, the law, but it doesn't make his model incorrect. Uh, in fact, his model has correctly predicted an important market low back in the first quarter of 2020 and a high in the first quarter of 2022. The thing that's interesting to us is that it is now projecting a market bottom in the second quarter of this year. And so the exact uh, date that the model projects is about April 10th, April 11th. And, um, you know, I'd give it plus or minus 30 days because the model isn't precise, but it's right in the wheelhouse. And so, you know, we would be looking at that, you know, time horizon as being very, very important and probably highly correlated with a important market low. One thing you could do for us is put on your calendar April, uh, because the, if this is correct, we should be heading down into April, and we want to be able to uh, maybe refine it, get closer to a low that, that could be one heck of a tradable bottom. Consider it done. <laughs> well, that that sounds fair enough. And I believe, uh, hold on one second here, I think we uh, want to talk about the gold for just a minute, the market that never stops going up. And uh, hold on a second, yeah. we'll get this chart up to see. Oh, this has been incredible. I mean, I... Uh, I have, I was, I've, I've been in love with gold forever. <laughs> anyway, you'll notice here, this is a chart of the gold bullion. You want to tell the folks here uh, what we're paying attention to? Absolutely. So we, we published this chart in our monthly Alpha Insights Review and Outlook publication, which is for our institutional subscribers. And we've been looking at gold as possibly of putting in a bottom uh, at that low around just under 1650. I think 1640 was the low. And, and our view was that that was possibly the C wave of an ABC corrective waveform. And if it got back above its 13-month or 55-week equivalent moving average, that probably uh, solidified that. And so we saw that happen last month uh, on a weekly or a monthly closing basis. And based upon that, we upgraded our opinion from bearish on gold to neutral. Now, neutral basically means that we're not – you know, super overweight, but we would take kind of a, an asset allocation position in it, something small in the 3 to 5% range. But once we break out above 1986 on a monthly closing basis, we would go all in on this trade. And uh, we think that the, you know, the gold, once it gets through that level, could rally up into the 24, 2500 range. Uh, as long as it doesn't break 1640 on a monthly closing basis, then I think we're good. Wow, that's really uh, wow, that's really a really a live one there. Hold on one second here. I've lost con contact here on some of my stuff here, Jeff. So uh, the next one is just how do how do folks can reach you? You've got a great uh, a free newsletter, and your tell them about the website and your Twitter and LinkedIn so that folks. Sure. 
take it. We're going to take a break. You can find me on uh, jwhinvestment.com and and find the newsletter tab on my website, and you can get our huge insights, the big picture, uh, issue number 17. That was our 2023 year-ahead forecast edition. Sign up, subscribe for free, and we'll deliver it to your uh, inbox once a month. We publish every Saturday. I'm sorry, the first Saturday of every month. Listen, thank you, my friend. Stay safe. We'll have you on again in a couple of weeks. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, I posted the chart of the Treasury bonds up here. Uh, this is a weekly. You'll notice the patterns that are there. We've been pushing these to your attention for well over two and a half years. Now, we are in the midst of a place where we could get an ABCD correction here. Uh, the chart is dark. Let's see why it's dark. Maybe we can get it to come up a little bit better. Sorry, Al. Get this up here. There it is, I believe. You can see uh, we could be looking at an ABCD level up into here, up into this 130 and change level. That's just a counter trend rally in a very, very bear market. Folks, this market had been bullish up until two and a half years ago in July. That's when we finished the big ABCD there. You can see there's what the number was. There was the high. We've been down all the way. There's your 135 pattern right here. And now we've hit a bottom and we're rallying back. Where we're going to go from this level is going to be really interesting to watch because if we get something like this, and it's at a 382 retracement of this level back here. 
that's going to be the last train from Boot Hill, folks. That means that uh, you're going to get ready because it's going to be really exciting. If you ever get out here to Tucson, you need to go to Tombstone, Arizona. 1865 was a larger city than Los Angeles. And uh, they have a cemetery there. It's actually a Jewish cemetery with actual tombstones from 1865, 1868, all the way into 1890. It's a national museum now, but it is a, a, an official cemetery. And some of the, the some of the tombstones, you, you can go online and read them if you like. They show pictures of them. But my favorite one is, here lies Lester Moore, shot four times with a 44, no less, no more. And speaking of Moore, tomorrow we have Michael Moore. He's an oil trading specialist from the Comex, um, Mimex Exchange. He's been around for a long time, great reputation. He's going to give us a half hour of the real skinny on the old market. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. 